Truman Madsen is one of the most compelling men you will ever meet. Intelligent, meek, insightful, devoted, humble, enduring, tender, uplifting, radiant, genius, a servant, friend, wonderful. He's one of the finest teachers I have ever known in my life. Save my father alone, there's no one that had been more impactful uh, to me in, in, in any way, shape, or form. I absolutely consider Truman as one of a handful, maybe three or four people whose influence had the direct impact on my life that I needed to make the decisions that have gotten me where I am. He has a gift to put people in positions and then allow them to be taught by the Spirit. He would stand at the side of a wine press and testify about what it meant when the Savior trod the wine press alone. He would stand on a boat on the Sea of Galilee or in the Garden of Gethsemane and testify about his personal witness about what had happened in the Garden, what had happened on the Sea of Galilee, what had happened in Nazareth, what had happened in these various places in Jerusalem over and over and over again. He taught us and he testified. I can't remember a conversation that I had with Truman that didn't somehow leave me feeling inspired. He wanted people to be able to, to love the Savior like he loved the Savior. He cared about it. He, he loved it and that, that comes through. And it reaches us because there's something in all of us that cares about it. And he finds that and wakes it up. With Truman, there was this spirit about him, as everyone who knows him. Uh, it didn't matter whether you were Arab or Muslim or Christian or uh, Israeli Jew, or didn't ma it didn't matter. Everyone who met him clasped his hand, gave him a hug, thought that they were great friends because they were. And uh, that was my, the spirit of who Truman was personally. We all know him as this great educator and a philosopher. Uh, and uh, theologian, but personally, that's who I knew. Whenever I saw Truman, I hugged him and thanked him for being my friend. And though through the years of being in Jerusalem, uh, it just was amazing, the myriad of friends that he had. He just loved people. So whether it was, a, he thought a 12-year-old was as important, you know, as some scholar in the group. He was a scholar scholar, a brilliant man, respected in so many quarters, but he could teach and seemed to delight in teaching also the common man, the common, the thoughtful but very common student who just wanted to know more. He spoke in terms that a football player can understand. <laughs> he was the genius common man. He was the teacher of all. Everyone would just sit at his feet and listen to him continuously because of his brilliant spirit and mind and heart. When you hear Truman in Gethsemane describing the oil press and describing how the pure oil of the olive is pressed and how it is refined, and then you understand kind of personally your attachment to the atonement, to your place in it. In many ways, the pain that was wrought, but yet the plan and the perfect plan that you could rise above it with the Savior. That to me is the crowning jewel of what Truman did for me in the Holy Land. We know that there are two kinds of experience in life. That on the one hand, actual experience brings pain as well as joy. There is another kind. It is vicarious. And some say it is impossible for anyone to feel someone else's pain. Cannot be true. Jesus could feel, and not only that, that night he brought upon himself all the consequences of feeling that go with sin, none of which he had committed. All the burdens that go with those who have so acted that they have brought consequences of evil on others. That and what we cannot fully measure was upon him. He was innocent. But that night, it was as if he was guilty of everything. That's why he sweat blood.